Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More. I am standing outside one of my rental properties, and it is actually one of my worst rental properties I bought. However, it has still been a very good investment for me, and I'm going to talk about how this investment has gone, some of the misconceptions about owning rentals, and if it's really as bad and as nasty as many people make it out to be. Now, I've had a lot of rentals. I own over 20 now, about over 25 in my career from a 900 square foot commercial property to a 68,000 square foot commercial property. All right, I mentioned the 68,000 square foot commercial rental property I have. I'm in it right now. This is my office, Blue Steel Real Estate, in that giant building. So I put my office in here. It's a grocery store, a bunch of other stuff. Lots of videos on this property as well on the Invest For More YouTube channel. So here's the point where I tell you to smash that like button and subscribe. Actually, I don't want you to smash it. I hear that all the time. And you're gonna break your phone if you smash the like button. So to 16 residential rentals. So I'm gonna talk about how it's been, things to watch out for, and why it's really not that hard to manage them or take care of them. As a landlord, there's many things you can do or a property manager can do to make it a pretty easy process and an extremely profitable process as well. So let's get started right now. We'll take a look at this house as I talk about some of the things to watch out for on rentals and how this was still a good investment, even though it's pretty ugly right now. So this house I bought in 2015 for right about 90,000. I can give you the exact numbers later. From the MLS is a great deal. I jumped on it right away. However, uh, it did have bed bugs and cockroaches after the tenants had lived here a few years. So we're gonna talk about that and how that happened. But um, you can see it's pretty nasty in here. We've had it trashed out. We've had it treated for um, roaches and bed bugs, so it's okay now. All right. It smells a little bit dirty. I can tell you that. I hardly remember this house. Cool. I'm gonna step there, strand into. And especially, ooh, oh, see that? Yep, that's not cool. Those are cockroaches. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Very few. Ooh, that looks really old too. Usually we're, we always replace those. Um, so anyway, there are cockroaches here. Uh, now I lost my train of thought as I watched the guy scurry down the door. This house is probably worth 230 to 240 thousand dollars after we fix it up a little bit. So obviously it's been a pretty good investment, even though it looks like this. And it was rented for about $1,200 a month that entire time I owned it, which was well more than my mortgage payment, taxes, insurance, maintenance, vacancies, any of those things we had while here. So I made about $400 a month in that range after assuming there would be maintenance and vacancies. So we'd usually calculate five to 10% of the rents will go to maintenance and vacancies. So that means I'm expecting 200 to $400 a month to go to repairs and months where there's no tenants or if we have to you know, pay a property manager to lease it, things like that. So because I'm expecting there to be problems, it's not that big of a deal when we do have some of the few problems that we have. All right, we'll go over the numbers real quick and see how close I was in the video to what they actually are now that I'm back in the office and looking at them. <laughs> so I bought it for 91.5, put 20% down, which is 18,300. My loan amount ends up being 73,500 and I paid about 3,000 in closing costs. Those are the, the basic numbers. I did make a few repairs on it as well, but not many. Then here we see the rent was about $1,215 a month from the very first time I rented it. I can't remember for sure, but these might be the only tenants that were in there for four years. I might have had one other, but I think they're only the same tenants the whole time. Mortgage payment, $370 a month. Taxes, $66 a month. Yes, Colorado has super cheap taxes. Insurance, about $85 a month. Now, this is what most people look at when they're analyzing a rental. These numbers, and they say, oh, I'm making like $800 a month, but there's more to it than that. Vacancies. This is the number when you don't have it rented, you don't collect rent. Or if you have to do an eviction, these won't happen every year, but you have to account for this. Maintenance. This is an old house, 1885. I have to account for maintenance. A lot of times I'll account, you know, 5% for these, but I counted 
10% just because it's an old house and I might have more vacancies, more maintenance in a house that's much newer. And property management, I have someone who's managing it for me, doing all the work, taking care of it. Cash flow, I'm making $334 a month, pretty much every month after I have it repaired and in service. And those are the real numbers on this rental without me doing any work. Now we can see what happens with these numbers that I added in here for vacancies and maintenance. Again, these are not real numbers. You don't pay these every month. They're just allocated for future repairs, which we see the house needs now. So my numbers were off in the video. This is why I do these to double check my math while I'm shooting a video. And you can see $1,440 a month times four years equals $5,760. And we have that for both vacancies and maintenance. And so I was off, but I've had this property like four and a half years. So I just kind of rounded down, but it would be about eleven, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000. We've allocated over the years for repairs and vacancies. And it's really important you do that. You can't just assume a property will be occupied and never need any work because eventually it will. And while we've had properties that have been occupied almost the entire time I've owned them for years and years and years and have needed very little work, they still will need some things. And like a house like this, which might need more than $11,000 in work, the ones that don't need as much work kind of make up for that. So the more rentals you have, the safer you'll be because you'll have you know, more consistent returns. Properties that have bad tenants will be counteracted by properties that have good tenants. It's kind of the same idea of buying multifamily properties, um, just buying lots of single family rentals. So the more rentals you have, the stabler your cash flow will be, and the more it will offset you know, bad things that happen. And then I also added down here just how much money we've made over the years. I did not include, like I said, tax advantages, which there would be lots of tax advantages here. There would be loan pay down as well, which I didn't include. Um, and this doesn't even include the appreciation we saw or the forced appreciation. So it's been a very good investment, even though it's been one of my worst treated houses. So the notion that rentals are trashed and you lose all your money is not really true. Even if they do get trashed, if you invested right and planned for it, it doesn't always end in a disaster. So this, I bought 16 residential properties from 2010 to 2015. Of those properties, I think we had 7% of them had problems or issues. Either tenants we had to evict, properties that got um, major damage. Not, this is, I consider this major damage. Some holes in the walls, really dirty. We had to rip up the flooring. Um, we've never had one that like was crazy major damage, but you know, ten to twenty thousand dollars in work. So over the, the course of nine years, seven to eight percent of them have had problems, and maybe one to two percent major damage like this. And what I mean by major damage or one to two percent is over that whole time, all those years and months, um, seven percent of the tenants we've had or one to 2% of the tenants have caused issues. Very rare is what I'm saying. So with the maintenance and vacancy costs that we add into it, you know, that ends up being, what? 4,000, 6,000 a year that we're allocating to repairs or vacant months. So since I've had this property for four years, I have built up, you know, twenty twenty five thousand dollars that I assumed I would need to use on vacancies, repairs, um, things that would come up. So really, even though this property looks pretty trashed, pretty messed up, it's what we expected. It's what we planned for. Now, obviously, I hope it doesn't happen, and it, and it doesn't happen on most of my properties. But it will occasionally happen. I'm not here telling you every rental is going to be perfect. You're never going to have issues. You're always going to have great tenants. You simply will have problems if you do have enough rentals and have them long enough. That's just how it works. Number, no matter how well you screen the tenants, no matter how much time you spend checking credit, background, income, all that stuff, you're going to have tenants who lose jobs, get divorced, have issues, it's going to happen.
So if you plan for it, if you expect there to be problems, it's so much easier to handle when you do have an issue like this or a tenant who was here for three years and didn't take care of the place very well and it was very dirty. Now, the other thing to think about, it was not me who found this tenant, who talked to the tenant, who had to fix the furnace when it went out or who had to fix the toilet that got backed up. That's like everyone's favorite line. I don't want to be a landlord because I don't want to fix toilets at 2 a.m. Well, I've never fixed a toilet in one of my rentals in my life, right? <laughs> Why would I want to do that when I don't have to? Uh, first off, even if I was a property manager, I could call my plumber and have him go fix the toilet. That's what plumbers do. That's what they're here for. Second, I have a property manager who manages this property for me. They do everything. I posted a video about this property like a month ago, two months ago, when it first became vacant, and I mentioned I had not been here for four years. Everyone's like freaked out. Well, no, man, no wonder it got trashed. You haven't been here for four years. Well, yeah, someone was here. The property manager was here, right? <laughs> they were checking on it. They were looking at it. We knew it was dirty. We knew we had some issues. However, the tenants really wanted to stay because they couldn't find anywhere else to rent. So it's kind of that catch-22 of, yeah, you know, we'd love to have tenants who take a little better care of it, who are cleaner, but they really want to stay here. They really don't want to leave and they know their rent's affordable. So relatively speaking, we're in Greeley, Colorado where rents are pretty high. So the point is I didn't do anything hardly on this property except for find it when I first bought it. We fixed it up a little bit and I have a before video when I first bought it that shows you what the property looked like. But here we, I'll show you what I mean. New carpet, newer paint, all the windows are newer. This is the living room here. The furnace is newer. It's just been serviced. Kitchen cabinets are newer. Countertops are newer. Appliances that came with it all work. One bedroom down here. It's a three bedroom, two bath. It's not like we rented it like that the whole time beautiful garage in here which needs some work as you can see that's structurally sound it's okay don't worry about it <laughs> um, whoa what is that sound that's weird huh ghost so I've expected there to be vacancies I've expected there to be maintenance I have a property manager taking care of this property. This is one of the worst properties that we have had over the years. I had one that was worse and I have a video of that as well that I may include part of or at least link to below in the comment section, description section. Know about before it gets this bad. Like this carpet right here is disgusting. Like I can't know if you can tell. This was brand new carpet and in a couple years it's nasty. Um, the stove, like, yeah. <laughs> all the windows, like almost all the windows in here are broken somehow. I don't know if they did that on purpose because they're pissed off at us or what. Kind of have to be careful where I walk. Um, yeah, I was telling Nikki, who I just been walking through this with, my project manager. It kind of reminds me of how the house looked when I first bought it as a foreclosure. Then we fixed it up. And a couple years later, now it looks the same as how. But you can see, like, how people live. Like, that is crazy. Disgusting. And they had kids, you know. They had a, quite a few kids. And you can see, like, their bed. Just nasty. And it's been an amazing investment. Have we gotten lucky because we're in Colorado? One of the most, you know, highest appreciating areas in the country? Yes. That has been a huge bonus. However, even if prices did not appreciate, they had stayed exactly the same. This was an amazing deal when I bought it. It's one of the great things about real estate. You don't have to buy things at full market value, full retail value. If you're new to my channel, we call that a murder basement. <laughs> um, I'll tell you why in a second. But I'll even go down here for you. Well, yeah. Um, it's probably worth 130000 when I bought it for ninety. That's the amazingness of real estate and getting great deals because it was a tired landlord who wanted to get rid of it 
they need a little bit of work and we were able to help them out. All of my rentals, I've gotten amazing deals on like that where we bought them 20 to 30% of what they're currently worth. So even if prices did not appreciate, we still would have a property that's worth 130,000. I made money on it every month for the last four years. We've accounted for all the maintenance and issues that we've had that did come up. And we'd have a lot of equity because we're paying down the loan every month as well. So rentals can be an amazing investment. You don't have to change toilets. You don't have to be the one finding tenants. You can hire property management and still make money. Okay, murder room story real quick. <laughs> uh, Nikki, my project manager, mentioned one of our house flips. We do 20 to 30 flips a year as well. Had a room in it where people were most likely murdered, multiple people. It was so creepy and weird. So from now on, every house I buy seems to have a room like that. And this one has a great murder basement, murder room. So that's where that comes from. So getting back to our point, this is one of my ugliest rentals. It's been a great investment. Am I a little bit embarrassed of what it looks like now? Not really. I mean, a lot of people in the video call me a slumlord from before, not taking care of my property. Well, it wasn't me who destroyed it, and it's not even completely destroyed. It was the tenants. They didn't want to leave. They wanted to stay here. They were okay with it. Obviously, at some point, we knew you know, we'd have to find new tenants, and we came to that point, and they still didn't want to leave. They wanted to stay. They kept, kept delaying it because they couldn't find any, anywhere else to rent. So... It's not the prettiest house in the world. Most of my other rentals, in fact, all of my other rentals are newer than this. This is a very old house built in the 1880s uh, with higher priced houses around them than this area. But still, I have no regrets buying this property. It's been a great investment. We're going to probably sell it and use a 1031 exchange to buy a bigger commercial property that makes more money. So there's so many ways to make money with rentals. Appreciation, cash flow. The tax advantages on this property are amazing as well because you can de you depreciate the structure over 27 and a half years. So that means one 27 and a half, you know, every year you're deducting the structure from your taxes. So even though I'm making money, I don't even pay taxes on all that money I'm making because I'm depreciating it. And with a 1031 exchange, you're not paying any taxes when you sell. So it's just so many pluses with rentals they're amazing and i get kind of upset when people misrepresent how great rental property investing can be how much money you can make and how it can help the average everyday person who is not super wealthy build incredible wealth all right we're going to show you a few more of my other videos now of my other rentals some of the good ones and some of the bad ones and maybe give you a little more insights as well onto different types of rentals you can buy. My first rental property I ever bought, and it's kind of bittersweet, we are putting it up for sale today. So the tenants moved out uh, at the start of this month. We got some people in there to do a quick refresh, rehab on it, and now we're gonna be listing it. So you can see all my rentals at investformore.com backslash rentals, but this was one it's been an amazing property for me. I've done a few videos on it as well that I'll link to. But um, sad to see it go, but also happy because it's going to be buying me another bigger, better rental property. So I'll talk about that here too. Um, this house I bought for 96900 something like that, in 2010. So it was my very first rental. My wife was pregnant with our twins at the time. There's never a perfect time to buy properties, that's for sure. But this was a really good deal, came up for sale. A um, little frustrating how it worked because it went under contract with somebody else, but then we ended up getting it when that fell apart. We had it rented for $1,050 a month from the, um, when we first got it after doing a few thousand dollars in work. It was needed almost nothing. And over the years, we had it rented for $1,500 a month this last time, we've had probably seven different tenants in here. All right, so you can see one of my worst rentals. I mixed in some other stuff in there. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Showed one that was also very trashed as well in another property and showed you my first one, which had seven tenants. And 
I don't know if we ever replaced the carpet the entire time we had that property for nine years. I don't think we ever painted and we had seven different tenants. So they can be great to your properties as well as bad. So remember that and take your time choosing the tenants, finding them. And if you choose property managers, take your time choosing them as well. And that's really what has been a key for me to make rental such an amazing investment is because I don't spend much time on them. I spend almost no time on them. The work is finding the great deal, finding great tenants if you're not managing it, or finding that property manager if you're going to hire it out. And you might have to do some work in the beginning as well, or if things get destroyed at one point, which hopefully they don't, but it could happen. And if you have a great property manager, they should be able to help you with those repairs too and have connections and contacts to do that. Now, things have gotten more expensive in Colorado. I don't get those $100,000 rentals that rent for $1,000 to $1,200 a month now. Those same properties are worth $300,000 now or $250,000. So things have changed. It's tough, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. There are many markets across the country, Milwaukee, Florida, the Midwest, upstate New York, all over the place that have numbers that work for rentals that are similar to what I was buying stuff for. And what I did is I switched to commercial. I have been able to buy small commercial properties in those same price ranges that actually have better numbers than the residential properties. And I've bought bigger commercial properties as well. So rentals can be an amazing investment. They aren't a huge time suck if you do it right. You can buy those rentals in any market that have good numbers, although it's tougher in some markets than others, I'm not gonna lie. And there's still opportunities. You didn't miss the boat completely to buy rentals after the housing crash. There are still opportunities and I'm going to leave you with one, with one of our most recent commercial purchases that we're working on right now. Of course, be sure to subscribe. We enjoy that. We have all types of cool videos coming up with our house flips, rental properties, advice videos, things like this, and a few exotic cars as well, like my new, to me, a 1994 Toyota Supra twin turbo six speed. We'll have a full video of that coming up soon. So be sure to subscribe to get notices for those. We appreciate the likes, any comments you have, leave them below as well. All right, take care. You don't have to buy expensive rentals, even if you're in an expen expensive market. This is one of my commercial rentals we just bought for 130,000. We're doing some work on it, taking off the outside siding, repainting the inside, doing some refreshing. And even though prices are 300,000 for a residential rental, you can buy cheap commercial rentals here. So don't always block yourself in that you have to buy a house or even a residential property because sometimes there's more opportunities with commercial properties and you don't have to buy big, huge, massive, expensive 50,000 square foot properties. There's all types of different rental properties all around no matter what kind of market you are in.